Okay, our last parallelogram is the square. So again, to the upper right um, hand corner of the notes, you can see the relationship between parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle, and square. So a rhombus is a parallelogram, and a rectangle is a parallelogram. The square is a rhombus, rectangle, and therefore also a parallelogram. So uh, in reading the definition, a square is a parallelogram with all sides congruent and four right angles. Therefore, it is a regular quadrilateral. Um, and it says a square is also a rectangle and a rhombus. So it has all of the properties. Let's take a look at this square to the right and the triangles within the square. So let's take a minute and draw the diagonals BD and AC. Okay, let's note that point of intersection again as E. We know, uh, let's mark all sides congruent. Okay, we have a right angle within the interior as it's a rhombus, so the diagonals are perpendicular. And also since the diagonals are congruent, let's note that all of the segments, the two segments of each diagonal are also congruent. So we have um, all of these isosceles right triangles above. So let's fill that in. Below. Okay, and as I said, we can put a one here. So that would be a one. Alternate interior, this is a one. Since the diagonals bisect the angles, because it's um, also a rhombus, the one is here and here, here and here, okay? So therefore, I'll, again, these are all 90 degree angles and those angles are congruent as well. So take a minute, pause the video and fill in the congruent triangles. Then unpause when you're ready to go over. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Triangle BCD is congruent to triangle DAB. And then below, uh, this time it is noted that all four of these smaller triangles within the square are congruent. So it goes ABE congruent to, I'm gonna write BCE first, and then CDE, doesn't matter the order you have it in, and then um, ADE as they're all congruent. So let's take a look at the first example. Which statement about a figure ABC would always be true? So one, if ABCD is a quadrilateral, then it must be a parallelogram. No, as we have yet to study the trapezoids. Okay, but that is out. It doesn't have to be a parallelogram. So the next one, if ABCD is a parallelogram, then it must be a trapezoid. No. If ABCD is a square, then it must be a rhombus. Or four, if ABCD is a rectangle, then it must be a square. So back up to our diagram. So choice three says that if it's a square, it must be a rhombus. That is true, because a square is a rhombus. And if ABCD is a rectangle, that last one, then it must be a square. No, if it's a rectangle, it must be a parallelogram, because that's what's above it. But if it's a rectangle, then it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a square. So the correct answer is three. In number two, we have square DEFG. So let's draw square DEFG. It says that DF is equal to, the length of DF is two X minus 17. So that means, so DEFG, that that's a diagonal. And the length of diagonal DF is 2x minus 17, and the length of diagonal GE is 28 minus 3x. Well, the diagonals are congruent, so their lengths are equal. So add the 3x over, we get 5x. Add the 17 over, we get 45. And then divide 45 by 5, we get x is 9. 
in number three, it says if the diagonals of square ABCD intersect at E, the measure of angle ABD. Well, angle ABD is right here. Angle B, because it's a rectangle, is 90 degrees. And then, remember, the diagonal bisects the angle. So each of these halves are 45 degrees. So the measure of ABD, algebraically, 7 minus 2x, is equivalent to numerically 45. Subtract the 7, we get negative 2x equals 38. Divide by negative 2, and x is equal to negative 19. In number four, um, it says if the length BC is five, so the side of the square is five, find the length of the diagonal. So we know that length CD is also five, and we have a 90 degree angle right here. So I'm going to redraw this triangle nice and large over here. There's the 95, five. These two angles must be congruent, and we know that the diagonal bisects this angle right here, which is 90 degrees. So this is a 45, 45, 90, or one of our special right triangles. So you can do Pythagorean theorem if you'd like, but if you memorize the relationship, the hypotenuse is whatever the leg is, radical two. So length of BD is equal to five radical two. All right, number five, find the perimeter and area of the square given that this half of the diagonal is seven. So this other half is seven, and I need to find x in order to find the um, perimeter and area. So I'm going to draw the triangle once again over here, and we know it's the 45, 45, 90. So I'm going to say this is seven, and these are both X. I will take the time over here to do Pythagorean theorem uh, because I think for you guys it's just more challenging to have memorized um, the relationship. But I made a mistake. This is 7, this is 7, and this is then 14. Okay? So we have x squared plus x squared equals 14 squared. So 2x squared equals 196. Uh, divide by 2, x squared equals 98. So therefore, it's square root of 98. Don't forget the plus or minus. That's 49 times 2. Reject the negative, and x is 7 radical 2. So remember, it's half the hypotenuse radical 2. So the perimeter is going to be 4 times 7 radical 2. That. So 4 times 7 radical 2. So that would be 28 radical 2, and we are given a unit as inches. And then the area is equal to side squared. So 7 radical 2 times 7 radical 2, which is going to be 49 radical 4, or 49 times 2, which is therefore 98 inches squared. And the multiple choice. Jessica is designing a circular piece of stained glass. So let's first draw a circle. I'm going to make a point first. I'm going to move that in. All right, so here's our circle. So there's our stained glass with a diameter of seven inches. So the diameter of seven. Well, I'm going to wait to draw that. Um, she's going to sketch a square inside the circular region. To the nearest tenth of an inch, um, the largest possible length of the side of the square is blank. So let's sketch the square within the circle first. And then I'm going to draw the diameter. Okay, so you can see the diameter is a diagonal of that square. So remember, the angles are bisected, so this is a 45 degree angle, 90, 45 degree angle, and we know the diameter is seven inches. Well, back up here this time, let's actually use the relationship. 
So if the hypotenuse is a whole number, then the length, or half the hypotenuse, radical 2. So the legs are half of 7, which is 3 and a half, radical 2. So in, or as a decimal, 3.5 radical 2 is equal to 4.94 dot, 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 to the nearest tenth. That would be choice two. All right, in this question here, we're going to find the length of segment SM and segment SR. So we have a right triangle right here. So this is 90. So let's use Pythagorean theorem on ML. So ML equals the square root of 18 squared minus 9 squared. And that's equivalent to 243, which breaks down into perfect square 81 times non-perfect square 3. And that's going to be 9 radical 3. So because that's 9 radical 3, that is the 30, 60, 90 relationship. So this is where you can actually put in the angle measures. Opposite the 30 is half the hypotenuse, and this then would be 60. So therefore, over here, this adjacent angle um, that's complementary to 60 because of the right angle right here would be 30 degrees, and therefore this as 60 degrees. So if we know, right, the longer leg is 9, it's an x to 2x relationship between the shorter leg and the hypotenuse. So then we can do x squared plus 9 squared equals 2x squared. So subtract the x squared, or rather 2x squared. Before we can subtract the x squared, this turns out to be, um, and I can actually square the 9. Change that to an 81 equals 4x squared. Now subtract the uh, x squared. So 81 equals 3x squared. Divide by 3, 27 equals x squared. Take the square root. So x equals the positive negative. Uh, 27 is 9 times 3. Let's reject the negative. And x equals 3 radical 3. So SM is the X, which would be 3 radical 3. And then SR is going to be double that, which is 6 radical 3. And then last, we're going to look at a coordinate geometry proof. But before that, we're going to go over how you prove um, the quadrilateral is a square. So the first thing we want to do is we want to show it's a rhombus. So length of all four sides and show that they're equivalent. And then you have a couple different options. So you can show that one of the angles is a blank angle or show that the diagonals are blank. Um, the first one, uh, you can show that one of the angles is a right angle because a square is a rhombus with a right angle. Or you can show that the diagonals are congruent. Now if you want to show that you have a right angle, you have to use the slope formula to show that the slopes of adjacent sides are negative reciprocals. Because remember, perpendicular lines give you a right angle. And then if you want to show the diagonals are congruent, that you means you have to use the distance formula to show that the diagonals have the same length and therefore are congruent. So let's take a look at this proof. So quadrilateral ABCD has coordinates that are given using coordinate geometry, so using distance, midpoint, or slope, show that the quadrilateral ABCD is a square. Uh, remember, the, the use of the axes is not optional. You are to graph it, okay? But the graph is already there. So let's find the length of all four sides. So be the distance of AB, distance of BC, distance of CD, and the distance of AD. So the distance of AB, so x2 minus x1, that would be 5 squared plus the difference of the y's is 4. I like to just write it out first and then do the calculations after. 
bc subtract the x's, we get 4. So 4 squared plus subtract the y's is negative 5. And then the difference between the x's, x2 minus x1 is negative 5. And then y2 minus y1 is negative 4. And then last, the difference between the x's is 4. And then y2 minus y1 is negative 5. So 25 plus 16 every time. So that's the square root of 41. Okay, so my write-up. So I know that all four side lengths are the same. Therefore, all four sides are congruent and it's a rhombus. So since the distances of all four sides are equal, then all four sides are congruent. Therefore, quadrilateral ABCD is a rhombus. Now we um, have to show now that it's a square. And I like to use slope. And it's also written down there. So let's look at the slopes of AB and the slope of BC to show we have a right angle here at B. Okay. So for AB, my slope would be 3 minus negative 1 over 1 minus negative 4. And then for BC, it would be negative 2 minus 3 and then 5 minus 1. So we end up with 4 fifths for the slope of AB and negative 5 fourths for the slope of BC. And they are negative reciprocals. Okay? So since The slopes of AB and BC are negative reciprocals. Um, then AB is perpendicular to BC and angle B is a right angle. Therefore, rhombus A, B, C, D, because I already proved it's a rhombus, is a square. As a rhombus with one right angle is a square. And there you have it.